Hello, welcome to another book review. I'm your host, Kristen, and today I will be reviewing the YA fantasy book, House of Night, Redeemed, by PC and Kristen Cast. In case you're interested in reading this book afterward, content warnings in the book are blood, violence, vomit, ableism, racism, mentions and attempts of suicide, misidentification, slurs, sexism, death, transphobia, murder, sexual assault, abuse, sex shaming, lesbophobia, gore, and homophobia. For this review, I will start with the overall plot, then world building, and find the characters. There will also be spoilers in this review. Let's begin! The plot for the online version of the book is as follows. In the final electrifying novel in the House of Night series, Nefret has finally made herself known to mortals. A dark goddess is loose on Tusala and the world. No single vampire is strong enough to vanquish her, unless that creature has the power to summon the elements, as well as the ability to wield old magic. Only Zoe Redbird is heir to such power, but because of the consequences of using old magic, she is unable to help. Find out who will win and who will lose in this epic battle of light and darkness. Unfortunately, as exciting as the book summary is, the House of Night finale is rather slow except for a chunk at the beginning, middle, and end. I'll get to the middle part in Thantos' character. What should have been a wild ride from start to finish turned into a crawl toward a distant finish line. The final epic battle only lasts around 5 pages, after 12 books of build-up. The plot basically goes as follows. At the start, Zoe is locked up in a cell and wants to reject the change. Despite never getting bail, or being told she'll have a trial. A moment later, Zoe's friends show up and everything is roughly back to normal. Meanwhile, Nefret takes over a hotel and holds everyone inside as hostages. Zoe and Co. learn of it and instead of trying to do something about it, they sit around bickering about petty things until someone finally comes up with a plan. Nefret kills some hostages. After the plan fails, the characters go back to bickering until they get a plan and rinse and repeat until Nefret is finally defeated. It was slow, boring, had way too many points of view, and the only chapter that actually had any entertainment were Neferet's. There was world building in the twelfth book. Why? Anyway, the tendrils of darkness Neferet has can now fully possess people. Nefret can also make a protective wall from the tendrils that even reflect bullets. However, why didn't she do this earlier, when she was at the height of power around book 9 and 10? Neferit just got back from dying, but if she had these abilities all along, why not use them? As the main character, Zoe was as whiny and awful as ever when she got out of jail. Instead of focusing on the main task at hand, like keeping more hostages from dying, she and her friends either sat around or bickered. It's frustrating especially since Zoe has all five elements that she could fight Neferet with. Throughout the entire series, Zoe is constantly told to stop whining and grow up, but she never does. In fact, she actually gets worse. When it comes to finally defeating Neferet, Zoe puts down the most obvious trap imaginable and then does the bare minimum. And it actually works. Despite Zoe acting as the bait in the plan, I was never once worried for her or her friend's safety. In the middle of the book, in order to stop Nefra from taking over Tusala, the group comes up with the idea of putting a protective fire spell that really comes out of nowhere around the hotel that will burn the tendrils of darkness if it could touch by anyone that associates with darkness. However, this spell requires an intense amount of energy and Phantos ends up dying after said spell is broken. What bugs me the most, however, is that there was no need for this fire spell. From the previous books, the reader already knows that turquoise will hurt and kill the tendrils. Just throw a bunch of turquoise around the hotel, and it's good. This death was rather pointless. Speaking of death, Kelowna and Orox also sacrifice themselves to stop Neferet. Kelowna dies while trying to rescue people from the hotel, while well, Oryx uses his strength to forever seal Nephrite underground. I know I should feel sad about this character's dying, but I really don't. 
They have both committed various crimes against people and have shown little remorse about it. Good riddance. Finally, I come to the last character, Neferet. Although the summary says that Neferet is loose on the world, she barely makes a dent in Tusala. During the entire book, the most she takes over is a hotel. A hotel. That's it. Worse, she can barely manage the hotel by herself. Although she wants everything to go back to the 1920s, Neferet elects one person and lets her run the show while Neferet complains that they're running out of supplies. If Neferet cannot run a hotel, how is she going to run the world? That said, Neferet taking possession of the hotel staff and killing some of the hostages was entertaining, but the rest of it was really just lip service about how she would rule the world and then never does anything. Not even something as simple as blackmail, ransom, or trying to build an army. Also, the way Neferet frees Zoe is ridiculous. At the start, some cops ride up to see what's going on with the hotel. Even though Neferet knows that Zoe is in jail and is being charged for murder, Neferet brags to the police about her killing the two men and then lets them drive off. Even though Neferet has Zoe where Zoe cannot stop her, Neferet decides to let her beef with a minor get the better of her. This wouldn't be so bad if Neferet's main flaw was being hot-headed, but time and time again throughout the book, she is meant to be seen as calm and calculated. Overall, I give this book two stars. It was a massive chore to get through, being almost completely fluff and filler. That said, it did have more accents than the previous books, so it was a bit better. Also, speaking of books, before this review wraps up, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of my friends, Writer. They have recently published an MG fantasy book that I recommend checking out if you have the time. Links will be in the description below. And that wraps up the final book for the House of Nut series. Thank you so much for sticking with me on this journey, and I'll see you in the next review.